Hello, it's Don Michelle from Boho Tarot, and today we are going to talk about what I'm going to be doing with my tarot journal moving into 2020. So as I mentioned in my last video, taking a look at my tarot journals for this year and thinking about some of the things that worked well for me, along with some of the things that didn't work so well for me, one of the things that I have decided to do is to move out of a bound book and to actually move into a traveler's notebook style um, of a journal. Now that would be something similar to this. This is um, my craft traveler's notebook and um, it has, you know, the little inserts that you can take in and out if I could find the center. So everything is put in with these bands and it has the little inserts that you can um, slip in and out of your journal. So I have a traveler's notebook that I have on order. I had mentioned in a, another video earlier this year, there was a particular type of traveler's notebook that I was looking to get. And um, I was able to get that as sort of an early Christmas present. Um, it's on order and hopefully should be here by the end of the year. In the meantime, I have created my first insert to go into it. So we'll take a look at that process here in a minute. Um, but first let's talk about a couple of things, just recap. Um, about some of the things that worked really well for me um, for this year. One of the things that um, I think worked really great for me is using these um, using these little inserts for my uh, tarot challenges. Now this is kind of what gave me the idea to switch to a traveler's notebook style journal for 2020 because this allows me to take out inserts if things start to get too bulky and I can work with them separately. And my hope is that by working um, with each insert, basically each month will have its own insert and that will allow me to only have to contend with a, uh, worth a month's worth of bulk. So rather than trying to work in this journal that is all this big and bulky, like I mentioned in my last video, I'll be able to just work in a small section of it at a time and I'll be able to have um, some inserts similar to these to remove in and out so that I can easily work with my journal rather than being kind of encumbered by its by its size and its bulkiness. So that's the um, one thing that I think worked really great um, in 2019. Although I did enjoy my practice as a whole and how I pulled cards and how I did my readings, um, one of the things that I want to do a little bit more of in 2020 is to work on more of those expanded readings like I showed you um, in the last video where I talked about my nested reading. And so this was a reading that I had did um, where I started with basically one basic reading for the week and then I worked on it throughout the week and then added it to my journal after the fact. Um, I did mention in my last video that I do have a whole nother video on this sort of journal with me process that I just threw together and posted in my um, Boho Tarot Tribe Facebook group. And you'll find links to that in the description box below if you wanna pop on over, um, join us there and you can check out the video. It is 30 minutes long, um, but it does show how I actually go about putting this in. And I kind of ramble through the whole thing. So if that's something you enjoy, you might wanna check that out. But I want to be able to do more of that in 2020. And the problem I have with a bound book like this is that I am limited to the number of pages. So by moving into a insert type of structure, I can basically build booklets that have as many pages as I think I will need. And then I can always add as I need, as I see fit as well. And then that allows me also to add more pages to the months that um, I might have more things going on or to make, you know, smaller booklets to supplement some of those other things. So if I wanted to do a big expanded reading like this, you know, I have the space to do that. So I won't have to be um, quite as on top of how much space I have because I'll have that freedom to expand as I need to. Um, I don't want a limited amount of space to kind of hinder my readings or my interpretations or, you know, or pair, I don't want to have to pare down um, my reflections and my interpretations in order to fit into a, the space of a journal. I want to be able to include what I need to include 
and um, using the inserts I think is going to work a lot a lot better for me for that. So the biggest thing, the biggest change that I'm going to be making to my journaling practice is to move to that um, traveler's style notebook. Now, of course, like I said, I don't have the actual notebook here because it's still on order. So that will be a fun thing that we'll, we'll get to take a look at in January. So one of the things that I did in preparation of creating my January insert, um, which we'll take a look at here in a minute, I did also take some notes about some of the things that I wanted to um, do and change up in my practice coming into 2020. And this is really handy if you are um, making some changes to your journaling, journaling practice, as well as if you're just starting from scratch to kind of lay out what you want in your um, journal. I did, I also worked out how many weeks there were in each month, what I might need for each of those weeks. Um, a couple of the things that I did definitely want to change is I want to, uh, as I mentioned in my last video, I want to pare down these calendars. Um, they're just kind of more than I need and I just not am making use of this big space. So this is half a page that's being kind of in a sense wasted. I mean, it is pretty, but like I mentioned in my last video, um, I can find more efficient ways to create a calendar like this without taking up quite so much of my journal. Um, so some of the things that I kind of want to focus on coming up in 2020 is um, I have a couple of decks that I'm going to be working with specifically, and I have another video coming next week about the decks that I'm going to be working with or some of the decks that I'd like to work with in the coming year. Um, I do want to continue my daily draws as I normally do, but I'm looking to kind of expand on those readings, not so much doing daily draws, but more focusing on weekly readings that I can um, sort of dive deeper into my big goal for 2020 in terms of my tarot journal is to dive deeper and that does kind of go along with um, some of my plans that I have to do a depth year for 2020 which I'll discuss in another video but one of the things that I really do want to do um, in my tarot journal is to spend some time reflecting on my tarot practice as a whole, how I'm honoring my practice, what I'm learning, and the challenges that I am facing. So that is definitely one of the things that I want to do. Um, I do also want to keep a couple of extra, extra um, journals. I do plan on doing a couple of different inserts for my tarot journal. So while I only have my one for January um, created here, I do have plans to do um, inserts for my tarot challenges like I've been doing. This is my one from December. And I will be creating these all as inserts as well. So the journal that I ordered, I think has three or four bands in it. So that means depending on how big my inserts are, I can get between, you know, really four, six, eight inserts into this one journal. So there's plenty of, um, options for me to be able to add a journal like this, add um, some little inserts like this. So some of the things that I want to focus on are my tarot challenges, so creating uh, booklets for that. I am going to be doing um, some uh, Mother Mary work coming into 2020, and I haven't 100% decided if I am going to just create an insert for it or if I'm actually going to create a whole separate junk journal. Um, I'm still kind of making my decisions about that one. I do want to reincorporate my self-care Sunday readings into um, my journal because that's sort of a practice that I kind of fell off with towards the fall, I think, of um, this year. And it is a practice that I definitely miss, so I want to bring that back in. And I do also want to keep a journal on my depth year that I'm planning on doing next year, and I'm not sure if that will be incorporated into um, this particular journal as, as its own insert, or maybe I will put it in my commonplace journal, but that's another thing that I want to tie into. But beans is that my depth year ties very, um, ties very deeply into my tarot practice. I might just go ahead and, and include it with this one. So let's go ahead and take a look at the insert that I created for January, and we'll show you the process um, as we go along here. Okay, I've gathered up my papers here, so let's just kind of take a quick look at what I've got. I've got um, what will be my cover, so for January, and um, 
It's just kind of a lovely dark color, but kind of pulls in those, those hints of color, um, that kind of blooming starting into a new phase, a new year. And I just kind of like that. Um, I'm trying really hard not to buy um, scrapbook paper because I have so much of it and I'm trying to use up what I've got rather than going and buying more as much as I do want to go buy a new book of scrapbook paper for every monthly insert that I'm doing. I'm going to try to use up the majority of what I have first. So, and that's, that's a struggle for me. But again, part of my depth here, I need to, I need to be focusing on that. So what I've, I've put together here is, and I've got a little sticky note. I don't know if that's even on camera. It's kind of on camera. Um, so I pulled out three, um, uh, three signatures from the original dot bound, um, dot grid journal that I deconstructed. So there are, um, four sheets in each signature. I thought there were more, but there are four sheets in each signature and that gives me eight pages total. So I have 24 pages here. Uh, now judging by how many, if I do this same, always using three stacks per month, because that's quite a few blank pages to, to work with. Um, I can get, what did I figure? I think approximately five months. So January, then we have February, March, April, and May. So I can get five months of inserts out of that one $8 journal. So that's not too bad. That means basically, you know, two, to three because I'll need a few extra for the end of the month. So three of those journals for the entire year. And that's going to give me way more than I need. So that that works. I'm, I'm happy with that. I do have um, a couple more of those. So it's not even like a big deal. I have them on hand. So three stacks of 20, for 24 pages here. Then I have various book pages, mostly book pages in here. And throughout the month, we'll see as how I work around these pages and actually make use of them. And then just a couple of plain sheets that have nothing on the back, um, just to add some color and some texture. So I have 12 of those. And then I have um, a couple of sheets of colored paper. They're sticking together. I have four sheets of colored paper. And that gets me up to 40 pages. So with all of this together, I now have 40 pages to create my, um, my notebook. So what I'm going to do now is basically just go through and start folding and um, layering them up. I do want to note I have a full tutorial on how I do this process. Um, I will try to remember to link that in the description box below, but for now we're just going to speed through the process so that we can get it done because we have a lot to cover in this video. Okay, somewhere in the midst of this whole process, my camera died. <laughs> so I did actually go ahead and bind the book. So you can see, actually I've blackened my stitches so you couldn't, can't see them so they blend in here. And I've also used some distressed ink to um, distress them on the side here, but hopefully you can kind of see where they are. So I did a five stitch, just my basic panel stitch. And then I rounded the corners because I thought that might look nice. So my plan is to make this, as I said, um, a traveler's notebook, but I am doing it junk journal style. So as we go along throughout um, 2020, I hope to be doing some videos on showing you how I actually fill out these pages. Um, I created a little pocket here just in case I want to tuck stuff. I have um, some book pages in here. Again, these are pages that I can cover up with other um, papers and other notes and things of that nature. So anywhere I have text that I don't necessarily want, I can go ahead and cover that up. I have some scrapbooking paper in here, some more book pages. 
Um, lots of dot grid papers to give me plenty of spaces to do uh, more elaborate readings if I want to. Um, just some plain colored paper. One of the things I really like about creating this, this notebook as a junk journal, because I could have just created a um, dot grid, you know, plain dot grid notebook insert, and that would have worked just as well. Um, I could have also just bought one. I have a couple that would be the right size that would just slip in there, and they're just plain dot grid notebooks. Um, but one of the things that I like about adding or creating the junk journal inserts is because it allows me to add these pages and this texture. Like this is a page from Alice in Wonderland. This is a page from um, an old astrology book. And it just allows me to add layers and textures that I can build upon and use those as kind of creative springboards for my journaling. So we have more dot grid paper. Again, some book pages, um, some different colored papers in here. I have a page from um, a children's book, which has just got some great paper and I like the coloring on it. I love the little illustration with the mice. Um, again, this is something that I can journal over the top of if I do a card pull or something of that nature, I can put that on there. Um, this is another book page that I just really enjoyed the, the look of it. I like the bear and the lady. Again, is that something I can journal around? Um, it's the back side of that page. More dot grid papers. We have, um, I have a book from, or a page from an old, um, trying to think what it is. <laughs> um, it's sort of like a, a magic and in, in a magician and witchcraft book or something like that. Um, some more scrapbooking paper, dot grid paper, another book page. She loves, she loves these pages. I think they're really pretty. Some black paper. And this is my center. And then we go to the other side of the book. We have more book pages, dot grid. And it pretty much just, you know, repeats. This is basically the other half of all of those pages. I love this one with the fox and the crow. It's from the, the, um, from the fable, some more dot grid papers, book pages. So I think this is gonna be um, a lot of fun to fill out throughout the month of January. Um, it does have sort of a, a loose theme to it, but I intend to kind of add to that as I add um, ephemera and images and text to it. And of course, my readings, which is it's going to be its primary purpose. And I think it's going to be um, a fun process to do and also a fun process to share with you all. So I'm really looking forward to doing um, those and starting a whole series, um, a sort of tarot journal with me series where we're going to work our way through these inserts. I think that's going to be a lot of fun. So that's the insert that I created. Um, you can see it's just stitch bound here. And um, when I get my traveler's notebook, it'll just slide between the um, bands and sit in the journal. Um, hopefully that will be here. It should be here by the end of the year. So we should be able to get started with that in January. So that's just a quick peek at what I'll be doing um, moving in to 2020. Um, like I said, I do have some journal related videos that I, I will have available for you. I'm going to be doing some journal with me as we work our way through this book. I also have a series that I am currently um, putting together on how to create your own tarot journal and some um, tips for practices and things of that nature that um, hopefully you will, will find helpful as you perhaps start or uh, evolve your own tarot journaling practice. So I'd love to know what you are planning to do in terms of tarot journaling for 2020, if journaling is something that you currently do or maybe something that you're looking to get started. Um, so feel free to share with me in the comments below. Thank you so much for joining me. I look forward to seeing you again soon for more creative tarot for an inspired life.